Hi, my name is Rachel Becker, and I'm the Copyright and Open Educational Resources Librarian at Madison Area Technical College in Madison, Wisconsin. Today I'm going to do my presentation called Stakeholders in the House, Identifying Campus OER Allies. Throughout this presentation, there will be moments when you can pause the video and write down your own notes, which you can then transform into an outreach plan. I encourage you to pause during those moments and go through the activity so that you can have something at the end to use to start your efforts. There's a lot of other areas to look at, but these are really great ones to start with. This can include your college's mission statement. This is what drives most of what you do at the college and can be a good way to connect OER to the mission of your institution. Is there an equity and inclusion plan? OER often fits really well into these uh, plans because it does promote equity and inclusion through several means. Is there a teaching philosophy that it fits in with? For example, a focus on anti-racism may be a good one. Under a departmental level, this could be an English department, chemistry, etc. Are there evolving needs for your instructors and faculty to address? For example, an emphasis on equity and inclusion in the courses. Is there a changing textbook market for a specific subject? For math, for example, there's often um, different printed textbooks that are out of print now and we aren't able to get. So our faculty are interested in bringing in OER as a, as a way to address that issue. Instructor, instructor flexibility. Instructors often need ways that they can apply learning materials to both an online or in-person environment. Since COVID uh, came along and disrupted a lot of our traditional teaching models, this is often a good way to bring up OER as a way to address that need. Once you've kind of done that high-level overview, identifying your specific stakeholder groups is very important. And these would be anyone who has interest in OER textbooks or anyone who might um, be potentially affected by a change. At my institution, I've identified the following, Academic Affairs, Bookstore, Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, this is the Faculty Center, Disability Resource Center, Faculty, Institute for Equity and Transformational Change, our nursing program specifically because they have incorporated a lot of OER content within their courses through the OpenRN program, our provost and our student senate, which then trickles down to our general student population. Now I encourage you to pause a moment and list three stakeholders at your institution. When you're ready, unpause the video. Next, we're going to find common themes and goals among the stakeholder groups that you've identified. What goals do your administrators share with faculty, students, staff? It could be an incre increasing student success through graduation, graduation rates, GPAs, employment rates, etc. These are often areas that OER has proven successful for addressing and might be areas to look at. Is there an institutional-wide emphasis on diversity, equity, and inclusion, or an equity inclusion plan that this could fit into? Finally, looking at student mental health, we can increase predictable spending, which then could reduce overall financial stress and address textbook access issues. Often your uh, stakeholder groups all share these common goals. Are there institutional problems that OER could help solve? including high DFW, drop, fail, withdrawal rates in key courses, lower retention among some demographic groups at your college, or just rising textbook costs in general. Again, I ask you to pause and name one common OER interest two of your stakeholder groups share. Unpause when you're ready. Effective outreach strategies. Next, we need to find our OER allies. We've identified all the possible stakeholder groups, but who can we reach out to first? Who has expressed OER interest in the past? This could be a spe specific instructor or an entire department. 
It could be faculty who currently use OER or those who use OER such as OpenStax and may not be aware that that's exactly what they're using. Student groups are another great place to reach out to. Students have a real interest in textbook costs as well as ways that they can disrupt the market through their advocacy. Administrators with interest, shared goals, etc. that OER could help address, which we talked about in the last slide. And quote-unquote easy departments. So these could be subjects with existing OER usage. Um, they could be ones that aren't currently using OER, but there's great existing content out there, for example, math or ones that are heavily affected by high textbook costs, depending on the publishers that they're using. Now pause and name one OER campus ally that you're aware of. When you're ready, unpause. An important part of developing an effective outreach strategy is recognizing the barriers to adoption. There's a lot of um, ways that OER can be very useful, but there's also pain points in the adoption process that's important for you to be aware of. That could be respect for time, so time that instructors need to focus on actually teaching their courses, now may be spent on OER development. Is there funding available to develop this content, or are our instructors and staff going to be doing it on their own time? There could be a low OER comfort level and making sure that faculty know that they don't have to know every single thing about OER, that you're there to support them in this. Or a overall lack of institutional support. This could be um, people who know that OER is important, but they, um, they may not be quite ready to adopt it as quickly as some people. Some common barriers that I found through my through speaking with uh, stakeholders at my institution was a lack of time for development, funding for projects, or lack of funding for projects. They're unaware of who to contact for information. There's fears of violating copyright, or they're unsure of OER's potential. So how it could actually um, improve their experiences or their students' experiences in the classroom. Now pause a moment and name one barrier to OER adoption at your institution. When you're ready, unpause. Finally, looking at the overall picture of the steps needed to develop an OER outreach strategy. These steps obviously are just a starting place. You can incorporate other steps. You can go out of order. Um, it's up to you. But a great place to start is step number one, identifying your stakeholders. Figure out who might be affected by this. Step two, find issues, initiatives, goals, etc. that OER could help address across your institution and across your stakeholders. Number three, speak with stakeholders, facilitating open discussion. This is crucial for you to be able to hear what their potential um, fears about adoption or their potential uh, places where they aren't as comfortable with it might be. And this will allow you to be able to address those in a more effective manner. Number four, specify barriers to OER adoption. Why, why might a department not want to adopt OER? How can you address these? Number five, identify OER allies. So who's going to be your champion in this? Who might be interested in being a pilot? Number six, target easy departments, subjects, et cetera, for adoption and outreach. This could be areas such as math that have a lot of existing OER content, or it could be other departments that have you are using some OER, but maybe they could switch to all OER. Number seven, articulate talking points for each. What, are, what is going to be your key message for each of your stakeholder groups? How are you going to promote OER for them based on your other research? 
And no, finally, number eight, gather your outreach materials. You Now that you are able to better understand what your stakeholders are going through, you can tailor your outreach materials specifically to them. Finally, pause one more time. What is an easy subject or department at your institution? When you're ready, unpause and come back. Thank you for joining me today.